No, I um, it's truly a, a privilege to be here today. I um, uh, actually, what I'm talking on today is commitment, and um, I'm a nervous mess. I've already got the sweats, and um, I'm not one uh, like. Honestly, it's one of those dirty words that Alan says, commitment. Um, I, I'm definitely not one that loves commitment, so I'm going to speak on it because, you know, every example I give my, you know, of myself today, it's not pretty, um, but but God's there, you know, like committing to God. Oh, that's just awesome. So just uh, a couple of things first. Um, uh, all this that works here, all the music, and you know, who who's ever locked the door of this place on the way out? Put your hand up. You've locked the door. Yeah, Luke at the back. So. I've got a bit of a saying, it's no fluke, it's Luke, and, it, and it's um, his birthday today, and he's hiding, <laughs> that's it Luke, yeah, there he is, so he's an 85 model, mate, great model, um, so yeah, all the best Luke, we really love you mate, and, um, and even um, Alan, Jackie, I, I nearly feel like they're, they're watching me there, it's quite freaky, um, no, <laughs> just absolutely love these guys, if you're a visitor today, we've got a few visitors, um, I so apologise, you've, you've got the guy that's like, oh no, not him, you've got him speaking today, and you've got, you know, Alan Jackie, normally, like the, lum like the lumens are down today, they're normally so bright, and um, so please come back next week, like, don't, don't hang it on this, please. Um, anyway, so yeah, enough with the disclaimers, so I've, um, uh, so basically, I, and I'm not the most organised guy, like Brendan's message last week, so structured. You won't, get, you won't get gold like that. Um, it's going to be, yeah, just bear with me a little bit. And, and the other thing is too, I, I haven't written down much because everyone who knows me talks too much. Um, and, and I think even Luke at the back, every five text message I send to Luke, he replies with, yeah, yeah, I'll get it done. So that's all I get. So I think Luke doesn't want to be my friend. And there's, there's a couple like that in, in this room actually. So anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about commitment as I've already said. So uh, I found this definition. It says, commitment can be defined as the, as the decision to do what needs to be done, whatever the cost. That's a pretty full-on definition, by the way. But, you know, we don't, must, we don't um, uh, yeah, mess around in here. We go for the whole lot. So, um, so, yeah, so let me just read that again. Commitment can be defined as the, as the decision. Um, I will start reading probably too, I promise. The nerves will settle. Oh God, come, come help me. Um, um, yeah, so um, commitment can be defined as the as the decision to do what needs to be done, whatever the cost. Um, and I've got, I've actually got a little example here, like brushing your teeth. Um, that takes commitment. Um, you know, you need to get the tube. You got your brush, and it takes a bit of time. If, if you don't have those things, it's not going to happen. And you know, on brushing the teeth, it's funny because in our house. The last 10% of that toothpaste seems to last the 90% of the time. It's a funny thing, toothpaste, isn't it? You always seem to be squeezing. Am I the only one that does that? Must be a kid thing. You always, you know, it's never new. Um, anyway, that's just, yeah, anyway, Al does that all the time, so you can just talk about anything. Um, anyway, so uh, we're going to get into the Bible. Let's talk about the Bible. So we're going to um, start with my story here today. We're going to be talking about Saul. Saul's not going to like me much because I have a bit of, bit of a crack at him, but... Um, uh, anyway, we're going to start with, uh, I'm just going to read bits and pieces. So Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people, Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death, men, women, children, infants, cattle, sheep, camels, donkeys, everything. He wanted it all wiped out. That sounds pretty brutal for the kids in here. Normally they're at the back on the off week. So they were really bad people. That all that all the Amalekites tried to do was just turn people against God. They were just wicked. So, you know, just bear with me a bit. So anyway, then we, we um, flick over to verse 9. But Paul and the army spared Agag, the king, and the best of the sheep, and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good, these they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised, uh, that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. So already Saul, he's got a few little things he wanted to keep. He even wanted to keep, you know, Agag the king. Like, you know, he must have just thought it was pretty cool. You know, I'll just keep the top dog with me. You know, I'll keep the king. Um, so, but God didn't say to do that. So then it doesn't get any better for... Um, for Saul as well, we go to verse 12, and it says, Early in the morning Samuel got up 
and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone, gone on down to Gilgal. So now the guy's thinking, oh, I've just done so well for God. I'm going to set up my own little statue. He can worship me as well. Uh, so, and, and then it actually gets worse for Saul. So we go to um, verse 13. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. Oh, I've carried out the Lord's instructions. So he's like going, you, we did it. Like we smashed it, kept some cattle and uh, got, the, got the king with me. So, um, yeah, so he's on fire. Like he just thinks he's on fire. But Samuel's just shaking his head going, not again. This, you know, because Saul had already done this. Anyway, um, so verse 16, he goes, enough. Samuel said to Saul, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And basically he just reiterates what he was supposed to do. And, um, and you know when you're doing the wrong thing, especially the wrong thing with God, you start to have to justify it. <laughs> and here's, here's Saul's speech. I just love this speech of Saul. It's, it's fantastic. But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed those Amalekites and brought back Agag their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God. Oh, so he's even devoting them to God. What a legend. In order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of, oh, I didn't check this word, Haley. divination. Divination. Divination? Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, and arrogance like the evil of a, um, idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. So, yeah, um, pretty tough. And then we're going to just um, go back um, to the next slide. I'll read it off here because if I keep reading here, I'm going to be flicking and it'll be an hour for me trying to work it all out. Um, oh, sorry. No, Luke, let's go forward which is actually back in a weird kind of way. Um, sorry, Luke, bear with me. He's definitely not going to like me now. Um, uh, yet, keep going forward. Uh, no, no that's, that's back, forward. Just keep them going forward. 1 Samuel 13, 13 to 14. 1 Samuel 13, 13 to 14. Oh, I can just read it out of here. I can flick back. That's, that's actually an easy one to flick back to. So we, um, so while there are a few technical difficulties, have we got it? Oh yeah, we've got it. So um, just, just here, so Samuel's already paying him out a couple of chapters earlier because what he did, he had to wait seven days and, um, but the army started to come in a bit closer and, uh, and, he, and he got a bit fearful. So right at the end, he's piked it and he's done some sacrifice to God and Samuel's, and then again, Samuel comes up to him, you have done a foolish thing. Samuel said, you have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. And then the next bit. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. So now we're going to go to one of my masterpiece drawings here, Luke. Um, this is, I did four unit maths at school, so if you um, can't follow, I actually didn't do that, but... Um, but this is, this is kind of some maths equations that often, often helps work it out. So anything less than 100% commitment to God, we just worked that out, um, is, is sad face. Um, you know, if, it, it, it's a sad face. If you're 100%, you get the, the happy emoji. Anything less is sad face. So we're going to be popping a few verses up with these. And uh, if it gets, I can, yeah, break it down. There's actually a really tricky formula on the Revelation verse, but I'll, I will explain it. And um, honestly, you probably need about two unit level to, to get through that, but I'll, I'll explain it after church if you need it. Um, so we're going to keep going forward here uh, to the next uh, verse because, Luke, if you let me down here, mate, I don't have the notes. All I've got is a couple of bits of scribble. You need to help me. Okay. Um, oh, yes, here we go. Psalm 119, verse 113. Who read their Psalm 119 this week? Ruth. Oh, M. Oh, mate. Joe, did you? Do you know... Or, Lads, oh, letting me down. Then, oh, good man. Right, I reckon I'm sending it out to about 14 people. I reckon about two are doing it every week. But um, Psalm 119 was a bit of a trick this week because it's 176 verses long. So they thought, wow, it's only one chapter. Yes. Um, anyway, so this one says, I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. So 
Um, when it comes to God, there is no middle ground. So we're going to go back up to the next formula. Um, next slide. Yeah, same one. It's the same one. Because that verse means the exact <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Luke. Mate, what would we do without him? We take him for granted, don't we? I, I'm trying to be his friend, though, and he still doesn't like me. I don't take him for granted. He takes me for granted. Anyway, all right, I'll try and love on the bloke, although I did nearly break his shoulder on Friday. Um, we won't go there. Anyway, so, um, so then we're going to go to Revelation 3, 15 to 16. Okay, let's read this verse. I love this verse. It's very serious, but it does get lighter. With, like with me, I'll give you all the kind of really hard stuff and I'll, I'll finish strong. Um, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. And verse 16, it says, So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. So this next formula is actually quite scary. So can we hit the next um, formula up on the board? Okay. So we've got 0% is just a sad face because that's the person that uh, those who are cold are in a position to be deeply impacted by faith. So it's just a sad face. The ones in the middle where they've got a bit of both, a bit of God and a bit of world, they're angry face. Okay, Those who are lukewarm lack enough faith to be fully engaged and God says he can't do much with them. So between 0% and 100%, it gets worse. He's like angry. A bit cranky. It's a weird fact. I think I went too much on the eyebrows there. Anyway, but what we want to be, we want to be the hot because those who are hot in spiritual matters are deeply involved and committed to the faith. And uh, like, I'm not talking about perfection. You can come live a day in the life of me and you'll see me just make some epic fail. These kids, four kids, they do, um, yeah, test your patience and we're one week out from school. Um, so, yeah, like, I'm not talking about perfection. I'm just talking about committing all the things to God. Don't just, um, you, know, and a, you know, I'll get to some more, you know, if it's not making sense, I'll keep making it make sense. Just bear with me. Anyway, so, um, oh, wait, so now my notes go to the back here. Yeah, so, um, so basically I'm going to talk about commitment because that's what I said I was going to talk about. So I struggle with commitment. As a kid, I used to play rugby union. I played for five years, extremely talented. I was going to go play for, um, no, I wasn't that talented. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to, if I was here, I'd G that up, but I wasn't talented. But I did score, I was, I was very quick, and back in those younger years, everyone ball hogged, and so they all followed the ball, and you could just run around. I scored plenty of tries. But, so I played for many years, but then training came in. To play a game, you needed to train. You couldn't just turn up and, and you know, get the glory on the weekend. You had to start to train. Three months in, I'm thinking, that little ball on those tries, it's, it's not enough. That's not enough for me to turn up the training. See you later. I quit. So that was um, the story. That was just one of many stories. Uh, so let's just skip through my next generation in high school. I remember um, I got nominated. It was, uh, I was in a quite a big year and they said, you, you know, you've been nominated by your peers to be on the student council. I said, that's great. I won't be going on. And the, t and the teacher goes to me, sleep on it. So I slept on it and I had some cheeky remark and I said, oh, mate, it didn't change me. I won't be going on. But this guy, he said, then this guy, I don't even know if this is legal, he, he rang my dad. He rang my dad and he said, this kid needs to go on. And, and, um, and I said, I, and I kind of felt the love from that. I felt the love and I thought, yeah, I will, I will give it a crack. And I was there for, for two and a half years and, and I did some good things. I went to the children's hospital, I did all those things and, and, I, and it, it really blessed me. And, I, and you know, for a lot of people, I think they thought I was coming good. Um, but, but I wasn't. And, um, and I remember they, they said, you have to work at the canteen. And I'm thinking, this is embarrassing. I'm working at the canteen. So I didn't even know the price list. And, um, and everyone's getting a ripper deal. And, um, and, I, and seriously, one girl, I remember one girl, she goes, sir, that's not right. And she gave me the right money. I'm like, God bless you. What is it? Thank you. Um, anyway, um, and lots of these things start happening. So, you know, eventually they came in and they said, hand your badge over. And it was just kind of domino for me at school. And I remember... By the time I'd finished year 12, I was just barely hanging in there. And I remember there was, my parents were sitting down at that end of year, is it a formal? And you sit there and, 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 then, and my parents worked there. There was only two kids that didn't get an award. 
and you were one of them, Nick. And I said, well, you know what? The teacher's got that right. I didn't deserve anything, you know? And um, all I did was kind of drive them insane. And then the next chapter of my life with commitment came when I met Hayley, um, you know, not long after. And she was awesome, like right from the get-go. Um, but you got to remember, she was awesome and I wasn't. So, and that normally, you know, didn't work out very well. And I remember she had a problem and I thought, I can help it. And when Nick says he has a plan, you run. <laughs> you run. Anyway, she had a debt. She had about a, an $8,000 debt. And I said, how much do you have of it? I think it was about $3,000. I said, you give me that $3,000. Anyway, and about six hours later, there was zero dollars. Um, I said, great plan. <laughs> Haley took it remarkably well. Um, and it was that, you know, kind of scared me. Because I thought normally everyone starts to run from me at this stage. You know, and I'm thinking, yeah, I've probably done it. I've ruined that. And then they normally start to get away and I've ruined another opportunity. But she was different. She kept coming, this one. And, um, and I thought, no, nah, this is a problem. So... I remember on Boxing Day, not long after I met Hayley, I, I got rid of her. I said, no, this one's going to be too serious. I don't want anything too serious. So, and then she kind of kept, you know, being loving and nice to me. And then um, Valentine's came and we got back together. Valentine's came around. I, I broke up with again on Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, I know, it's, it's not pretty until I meet God. Trust me, you don't want to know me before that. And, but somehow this lady did. She was awesome. Even, I remember my friends saw her and they thought I hired Haley. They're like, mate, they knew like, well, we're out. Yeah, so she was awesome. Um, anyway, she kept coming. And then I remember um, the third time though, the third time, Haley goes, if you do it one more time, I went to do it again. And um, haley has got beautiful eyes, but I, re I don't know if eyes can turn red, but they did to, on this time. And she said, I will not be back here. Well, for example, if I see those eyes again, it would be like, say goodbye to daddy <laughs> you know <laughs> we get yeah so i'm scared of those eyes but you know what she stood up for me and uh, and from there um you know i wasn't wasn't really good but i saw something different in Haley, and uh and it was just her heart you know because she'd been baptized earlier and um and i feel like that person just had god's heart just to hang in there with such a loser and um you know although i was pretty you know Haley's going yeah you know he was a loser but um <laughs> I wasn't that bad, but I did some bad things, you know. Um, but basically, we're going we're gonna to go over to, um, to Jude 21 just to get some clarity on commitment here. And, uh, you know, my, my little fellow Judy reminds me a lot of this Jude in the Bible. If you ever, you know, want to read a, a full book of the Bible, Jude, it's, it doesn't even have a chapter in front of it because it's just one, one little bit. And uh, it's a really heavy hitting book. And, um, you know, he's a no-nonsense. He, he was the saint for lost causes. You know, the Catholics had a saint. And, um, and so he used to go out there. You could just imagine Jude on the streets, the Jude of the Bible, Jesus' brother, just going out there and reaching those people that no one thought could be reached. So this guy, I just got such a heart for this book of the Bible. So we'll, we'll hit it up there with um, verse 21. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Keep yourself in God's love. So basically, uh, like I just love Jesus so much. You know, like a lot of us, we get such a good deal with Jesus. You know, you know when you buy something, or, you know, when you get something from a shop, you buy it first. Do you know what I mean? But Jesus didn't do that. He kind of said, no, you can have it all. He dies. So I often think of this vision for my own journey. I think, well, I imagine I've done something really bad, like, you know, and it's just escalated for me, and I'm on death row, and, and no one's coming, you know, everyone hates me, I'm just, you know, I'm in the tabloids, and this guy is just, a, you know, just a horrific, horrible person. And, um, and Jesus is like, no, 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 I see something in that bloke, and he comes, in, he comes and grabs me, and he says, um, you know, he takes me from, um, you know, say, Los Angeles, and he says, but now, mate, you've got to take me back to Houston, Texas. And I've, I've got to go get executed over there because I've got to take your life sentence. So, and that's how I imagine my journey. I don't just get it for free. I've got to go take him with me. And I've got to go take him back over the road. And I often think, well, far out. I had my mates, um, and I love my neighbour Dave. He's an absolute legend bloke. He messaged me the other night. And I, and I get a few things like this. And he goes, well, come have 15 pints with me. We'll get on the, on the machines and, you know, we'll watch the cricket and we'll back the cannon in great, you know, greyhounds and, you know, shenanigans. And I, I heard about the night because I work with one of the blokes. And, um, and I was thinking, imagine if I, if I did go to that. It would be a bit of fun. Like, don't get me wrong, a bit of fun, but it's not God's fun. I, like, I'm taking the guy back to go get executed at Houston for me. And I said, oh, mate, just stop here. 
And uh, just wait for a second. I've just got to go do this. And uh, that's kind of a bit how I live my life. Like, I think, you know, um, I don't just say he's done it. I've got to go, you know, he's got to come with me. And that's what I love about this verse. And because Jude, if you read every verse in Jude, oh, he doesn't miss a beat, this lad. Um, so he's just unreal. So keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. So my example today, um, hopefully it makes a bit of sense. I'm going to use Afterpay. Who's ever used Afterpay in here? Yeah, a few Afterpayers in here. It's very popular. You know, you know the slogan? You know, who knows the slogan to Afterpay? Do you know the slogan? Oh yeah, buy now, pay later. But the actual, actual real slogan, I looked this up, is uh, there's nothing to pay. <laughs> oh God, that's, that's, that's amazing. So you're getting it for nothing, you know, like there's nothing to pay. Um, and, uh, and this is how they often advertise it. They say, are you broke, but strongly support treating yourself after pay? <laughs> you know, sensational. Like this is how they're getting us all hooked, the millennials. You know, actually, um, I read a stat, one in six never intend to ever pay for the item. They never, they just want it for free, and then one in six never pay it back. I read that. Um, ASIC, um, which, you know, when I used to do economics, what does ASIC stand for again, Liam? No, you don't know. Oh, it's some department. They said that more than half of the users are spending more than they otherwise would. Um, so Afterpay, even though it's a great deal, it's a great deal. They, they think it's, you know, there's nothing to pay. If we do get it wrong, there will be something to pay. I had a look and these are the five negative effects of afterpay. Okay, it says it encourages impulse spending. So let's put that on our kind of Christian journey. It could change your character, you know. Um, you know, not that I'm having a real crack. This, you know, afterpay, I'm not really against afterpay. This is just an example, okay. Gee whiz, I'll come sue me here. Um, two. <laughs> Late payment fees. So it will rob you if you don't get it right. Uh, three, you can't pick when you pay, so you start to lose control. Uh, four, it can affect your ability to apply for loans, um, so it affects your future. And five, um, you spend what you don't have, so you can become a bit of a thief. Um, so, so even that, you know, like when we commit to that, there's nothing to pay. A bit like God, you know, we don't have to do anything. There, there, is, there is some, uh, you know, yeah, he does expect something. And just like that revelation formula um, with the, you know, zero to 99, he does want all of us. You know, he can't really work, you know, with part of it. And I, and I think so many people here, they're trying to commit to certain things. And I, I honestly believe if, if like any commitment you have before your God commitment's at 100%, I can't vouch for that. I don't know whether it's right, but if you're at 100% commitment with God and then you do something wacko, mate, I don't, like God is speaking to you. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, but you need to get yourself right with God. All those little things where, you know, a great way to work it out is when I wake up in the morning, first thing I wake up and I think, I think how can I help people today? How can I be godly today? What, what jobs am I going to? How can I, how can I go help? But if you're thinking, you're waking up, the first thing you go, is Bitcoin 60,000 today? Like, oh, imagine that. My wealth's going to be like 1.2 million. Or, you know, what, what, what do you wake up in the morning and think of? Like, uh, you, know, you know, what seasoned pizza am I going to Look, I don't know what, what consumes your thoughts, but we need to make sure that it's God, you know, and the rest will follow. And God is such a ripper God. I, I don't, I can't work it out. I've been... I've been that scumbag, do you know what I mean? I see people doing the wrong thing and I can't work out why they keep torturing themselves. You know, God has got such a good plan and I often think, you know how like, everyone wants an easier way. Like the easier way, it's the worst way to describe the Christian journey because like, imagine if you go on this walk, like, you know, who's been to Cradle Mountain? Has anyone been to Cradle Mountain? And, yeah, it's a lovely spot, beautiful mountain. It's not an easy trip. It takes like a couple of days to do the whole thing. But you'll be rewarded with its beauty. Like you could walk down to a pond, which takes four steps. That's great. Like, the, explain easier. Like, you know, that's why I love that Defender song, so much better your way. Oh, amen. Far out. Come on. Far out. Some people just can't get that. It's like, oh, who wants it easy, you know? And then the people that want it easy, oh, you just watch them torture themselves doing all the wrong things anyway, you know? Far out. So um, anyway, so I don't know if I'm running touch over here I seem to rattle pretty quickly I'm going all right I'm yeah fine um, so either our God is Jesus 
or our God is ourselves. Um, not much. I don't have a formula for that. That's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, but Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. And, you know, I just love that verse. It's one that we all know. It's, a, it's an old classic, but I thought I'd put it up here. And because when we do submit to him, it, it has, it's actually not only a straight road, it's an amazing road. It's an amazing road. I often think of this. I, I, I was singing this song to the kids the other day. I drove them crazy with it. I sang it for like two hours when Haley was out somewhere. And, um, and I called it like intersection. And, um, and, the kid, and I'm like, gee, and the kids up. I could be some famous, you know, worship guy. And, um, and basically, the song's about this guy. He keeps getting to the intersection. And, uh, you know, so he's driving along. And, uh, and he's just, it comes up and God's on the right and the world's on the left. And, uh, and he, he keeps going left and it just doesn't answer his problem. So he's back on the road again and uh, he goes left again. And uh, this time I'm just starting to really drive my kids wild with this song like, like I am you guys, but just bear with me. So he starts to keep going down the road again. And because he's been left so many times now, there's such a lot of pull. There's a lot of things he's looking at on that left side. And, um, and so this time he starts to cry out. He starts to cry out a bit and he goes, God, God, help me. But the pull, again, it just pulls him left. There's too many things. There's too many things that are consuming this guy to get to that spot where he needs to be. So he, he just keeps getting dragged left and then eventually he starts driving down the road. Um, if anyone wants to sign me up, it's pretty good now, isn't it? Um, but uh, eventually he starts going down the road and, uh, and he goes, mate, I can't do it, God. I can't do it. And that's when God goes, I can use this bloke. He's laid himself down. So he's let go of the wheel and then he turns right. Then he finally goes right. So if you look for that song, it's not available. Um, it's still in production. Um, but there's a lot of truth to that. You know, you've got to really let go because when you're trying to do it yourself, you know, um, that's when we can really, you know, continue to falter. You know, we don't have that strength. Like, mate, the amount of things I see people Google, it's just, it's tragic. Um, you know, we've all got answers for everything and... You know, you know, there's knowledge, like, like Al always says, God bless Al, like he's just put such a heart into all of us here. But um, there is knowledge overload in this place and all we need is, is one, one person. Like this book, like, like I just treasure this book. I remember I used to play footy with this book as a kid and I used to read its words and go, what a load of boring nonsense. And holy moly, how wrong was I? This book is treasure. Like, you know, and I see the kids read it today, like, you know, and they look at it like the way I look at it, and it breaks my heart. Like some of them, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is absolute gold. This is this is a master plan in here, and um, and you know, and all scripture is God breathed. I don't care if you're reading like the genealogies. I don't recommend that, but um, but it's all God breathed. There's something in you know every page is just sensational, and just praying, like just submit it, and uh, and actually this last verse that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to conclude and. And Danny, if I can get you up and sing that song that I surrender, because like, I reckon that song is just sensational. Like, I'll, I'll, oh, I'm changing up. Is that going to be a problem to change up? But I'll just say, you know. Um, but basically, the last verse I'm going to talk about, it's, it's one of the nicest verses in the Bible, but you've still got to do it. Um, and it's 1 Peter 5 7. Um, if you can put that back up there for me, Luke. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And uh, when God uses all, he doesn't mean 99% because I can guarantee that 1% that you hold on to yourself, whether it's your little, you know, dung ankle or something that you think you can fix yourself, he wants all of it. He wants every single piece of your anxiety or it's nearly a no deal. Can we flick up that photo again, even for that verse? We just need to get the formulas right on all of these. So yeah, again, so that's with anxiety. If you have any less than 100% anxiety committed, to God, it will be sad face because you'll just focus on that one little thing. A hundred percent and you get the smiley face. So that verse, it sounds wonderful. Like, you know, cast all your anxiety on him. But you know what I see people do? They cast some of it. They cast some of it and they hold, they hold that other stuff in. They try and do it. Now, like whether they're too proud, I can't do that. Like whether you like Saul, Saul in that story, he lost faith. He saw those soldiers coming. And he's like, no, I can't do that. And then he got greedy on the next door and he says, no, I need those things. He started to look to material things. God is enough. But if there's something out there
that you're holding on to or burden. Like, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says rejoice always. You know, if you're, um, I I was reading, um, you know, Al gave me these slides and I was reading um, uh, at a Bible college, this guy's um, lecture. And I realized the guy that was doing the lecture had cancer. And um, and and I think he was given about six months to live. And, um, but he was still doing these lectures. You know, he's still training me. I don't know when this was pre-recorded. An amazing guy. And he goes, if my time's up with God, my time's up with God, but I need to keep pushing in. I need people to see the joy on my face. Rejoice always, have joy always. And so this guy, he was going through massive battles and he didn't want to leave his family. He had a lot to do. And, uh, and praise God, because I watched on a later slide. I didn't know what happened to this gentleman, but I watched another vision. He was back there, he was back. God saved this guy. He had more for this guy to, to do. But um, yeah, rejoice always, rejoice always. So anything that's big, and I have been sensing some people in here are going through big stuff this week because I've been praying praying for, for a rise. And um, yeah, if there's something you can't let go of, let me tell you, let go of it. Like God will just help you out so much. Like, mate, like, and if you want to get, um, you know, prayer today, Roots up here, I've got Theo that'll pray for you. If you feel like you need that breakthrough, um, yeah, mate, like by all means, come out there. So, um, so I'm going to wrap up there. I just think we, like, if we can all just, um, yeah, worship this last song. And thanks so much for your patience. I know I'm not the, you know, the, the top line choice in this, in this place, but, um, you know, Al, Al will be back and I'll, I'll pray that Al forgives me for, you know, being so unstructured. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I just love all you guys. I love what this place has done. I love the, I love the love. Like I've learned to love more in this place. Like I've learned to see, you know, and, um, and I'm even thinking like if, you know, imagine if you came up to, to pray and, and get prayer and there's someone in here and, you, and, you, and you're holding back right now because you think, or oh, someone might judge me and say, I'm 23% the world and 77% God. Well, let me tell you, if anyone thinks that, they need, they need to be up the front the most because, you know, the ones that are up there, just like that guy on that road that just needed to let go of the wheel, the ones that let go, gee, I've got a lot of time for people to let go, and so does God. Just like that formula, you know, he just wants that smiley face. He just wants you to be fully committed. He doesn't do that to torture us. He does it because he loves us, you know. And so when you've got a bit of God and a bit of the world, holy moly, it pains him. That breaks his heart. It breaks his heart, okay.